continuing from our last section, we're going to be looking at adding more detail into the plan drawing now. This is going to be through the creation of doors, windows and the staircase. And we're going to be introducing the block creation tool and also the array tools to help us with these. We're going to start with the creation of a simple internal door and I'm just going to go back to my reference file to have a look at where these are positioned in the plan. So we have two internal doors here and we're going to start working on this one on the right hand side. I'm going to be drawing these doors in the section thin layer as they are elements that are being cut but I don't want them to show up as heavy as my internal walls on my plan. So I'm just going to start by using a polyline tool to draw a simple rectangular door. I'm going to make it the width of the frame which is 850mm and we're going to make it 50mm thick. Just like so. And then closed it to make a closed rectangle. We're then going to centre that to our door frame. And we're going to add in an annotated door swing just so we can kind of show the extents of how this door opens and closes. I'm just going to do that using the circle tool. And then I'm going to draw another polyline to show the extent of the opening of that door. I'm going to then use those two lines to trim off the excess of that circle using the trim tool as we covered in the previous session. Just get that extra bit there. Now because the swing of the door is just an annotation and not part of the door itself, I'm then going to move these lines onto my annotation layer. So there we have a kind of simple diagrammatic door. Now if I wanted to then add this door into different places within the plan, we could just select those lines and copy them and paste them sort of in place. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this door into a block. And what a block does is it means we can make multiple copies of this door and they'll all be referenced to one another. So if I then go and change an element of the door, all the other doors in the plan will change accordingly. And this is really useful when you have multiple components which are all like the same build up or have the same detailing with them. And this is just a really useful tool to keep in control of all those multiple elements. So we're just going to copy this door out to the side so we can see it more clearly. And we're going to select the lines and just type in block into the command here. It asks you for a block base point and this is kind of the point the block will be inserted in when you first insert it. So I usually take the top left hand corner, kind of any exposed corner is a good one to start with but a good kind of preference is usually to put it at the top left. There. Now it asks you to define your block with a name. The important part with blocks is you have to give them all unique names for each one. So we're going to call this door 01. If I wanted a different type of door, we call this door 02, door 03, etc. So it's really important to kind of keep your block names unique because if you have the same name, they might overwrite one another. So once that's done, hit OK. I've already got one that exists. Like I was saying, it might replace it. For this example, I'm just going to say yes. There we go, we've made the block. So if I select that now, you'll notice in the properties under type, it's labeled as a block instance and it's called door one. This is different to the door over here we have, which is just a selection of closed curves here. You'll also notice that all those lines are now grouped together as one group. So what we're now gonna do is I'm just gonna delete this original door and we're gonna copy our newly made block into place, put one here and one there. Now the kind of really useful thing you have with blocks is the ability to edit them all simultaneously. Now if I then go back to my, let's take this one, and I decide I want to add a door frame into this door and make it a little bit more detailed. If we type in block edit here, this gives us the ability to edit our blocks and you'll notice once I've typed in that command, all the lines in the scene will kind of go greyed out apart from the block you're working on, which means we're just solely working on this element and I can't select kind of other lines in the scene. So let's add an extra door frame. I'm also going to tidy up this line here because it looks like it's slightly off there. So first I'm going to just go polyline and we're going to draw 50 and we'll 
we're just going to make the door frame sort of as wide as the opening there. I'm going to mirror this so it's over the other side. And we're going to tidy up those access lines just by using the trim tool to trim off those pieces there. And get rid of that extra line too. I'm actually going to delete this line because it looks like it's slightly diagonal there. So this is a good chance to tidy that up. And I'm going to move my door swing into the center. I'm going to scale this so it's the right size for my new door. And then I'm just going to draw on that extra piece of door swing, like so, and put that on the right layer. So now I'm happy with my door edit there. I've kind of added a frame and reduced the size of that door swing. I'm just going to go OK. And you'll notice that now all my blocks of that door have changed according to that edit I've made. So this is really useful when you've got multiple doors copied around and then you decide you want to change one of them. They will then all change accordingly and it will save you lots and lots of time in editing those. So that's a kind of simple internal door we've done. Let's now have a go at doing one of the front doors to the flats. You can see in my reference that I've got these two front doors here. This one going to the flat above and this one going to the flat below. So let's have a go at kind of making this front door on the left hand side first. So I'm going to copy up this door I previously made. And we're just going to rotate that into place. And I actually want the opening to be the other way around, so I'm just going to mirror this as well. Just along that center line there. Now, with this door, I actually want a glass kind of panel in the middle because it's going to be a front door, and I kind of want a glass front door for this project. So, what we could do is we could go block edit again, but what would happen if I did that is it would edit all of these door instances that I've already made, and I actually want the internal doors to stay as they are. So we want to make a unique block for this front entrance door. So to do that, we first have to get out of the block we've already made. And to do that, we have to explode these lines. So just type in explode into there to break this back down into its component lines. Then if we select those lines again and type in block, choose the base point. I'm then going to call this door front. Now this is going to become a new block for the front door. And you can see here it's now a block instance, but it's called door front. And this one's called door one. So these are two separate block instances. That means that if I then go to edit this one, so let's say, let's make a kind of simple inner frame here. remove these two lines, copy this down, and I'm just going to draw a simple line in the middle for a kind of piece of glass. If I'm drawing glass on a kind of drawing of this scale, I'd actually usually just draw it as a single line, and I want to keep it as my kind of section thick line, um, section thin line, sorry, here, because it's still being cut through, but I don't want it to show up thick on my plan because it's just a layer of glass, it's quite thin. I'm also going to show the kind of edges of the door in elevation as well. Here. Here. So now I'm kind of happy with that, with my glass panel. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll notice that these ones haven't changed because they are separate blocks to this one here. So once I'm happy with that, I can then just mirror that over to the other side as well. So that's kind of an introduction to creating blocks and kind of separate blocks with different elements. I could then go and create blocks for my windows using the same method as well, and I will be going on to do bits and pieces like that. So you can use this for any element that's repeated over and over again in your, in your drawing, and I usually use this for doors, windows, um, any kind of detail components or steel beams or connections you might be drawing are really useful to draw as blocks. Now we're going to move on to looking at the creation of the staircase and the introduction of the array tool. So 
going back to my reference, you can see here that the staircase, we actually have two staircases, one that goes up to the flat above and one for this flat that goes down to the flat below. The arrows here always kind of show the direction of from bottom to top of the staircase, they always point upwards. Now, to start drawing this staircase, I'm just going to take the kind of start line and roughly draw this in and the end line here. And then we're going to turn that reference off. I'm going to just trim those lines up so they're sat in between my internal walls. And I just need to extend this one, like so. So there we have the kind of start and the end of my line. So it seems to be on the reference that it wasn't exactly centered. So I'm actually just going to move this line to there. So now that, that's centered it onto my kind of center grid line. And to create this staircase, we're going to be using a command called the array curve to array a series of steps which will be of equal distance to one another up the staircase. So to do that, we're first going to draw a line in between these two points spanning from their midpoint to midpoint there and that's the kind of length of our staircase we will then select the first line we want to copy up and type in array curve it asks us to select a path curve and that path curve will be this kind of line that denotes the length of our staircase and then we have this kind of little window that pops up and it asks us how many items we want. So this will define the number of steps we have in our staircase. And you see as I kind of add more items or more numbers to that item, the distance between the items gets less. And this distance here will be the kind of width of each of our stairs. So for a kind of residential staircase, you probably want just over 200 mil width. That's quite nice. It might be that you want this distance to actually be a whole number and you don't want it to be kind of a large decimal place, like in this case. In that case, you might want to then click on, instead of defining it by the number of items, you might want to define it by the distance. So I click on that and actually say it's 220 millimeters. Hit OK. You'll see we'll have this kind of little extra piece, but that's fine. It will then mean that each of these stairs is exactly 220 millimeters away from one another. I can then take off the last step, trim off that kind of end piece, and then we can select all of these and just center them back to the grid line there. So now we have our staircase with equal proportion stairs, kind of equally going all the way up. Now in this drawing I actually have two staircases, one going up to the floor above and this other staircase going down to the floor below, as you can see in my reference. In this original drawing it was drawn that the kind of cut line between the stairs was drawing like cutting through a wall. For this drawing I'm actually going to use a kind of more annotative way of drawing it and we're going to just draw the cut line as a simple kind of diagonal cut between the stairs. So let's just take it from here. This is where our cut line of our stair going up will be. And I kind of want to show the difference between the staircase that's leading to the floor above and the staircase that's leading to the floor below. And to do this, I'm just going to change the line weight of that. So the staircase going up, I'm going to make my elevation midline. So it's going to be a slightly thicker line just to kind of show that that's the staircase going upwards and the staircase going down. I'm going to leave as my elevation fin line. Then for the cut between the two stairs, I'm going to actually change this line type to a section mid, which is a thicker cut line between them, like so. So that shows that this staircase going up is then cut there, and it continues upwards, and this staircase going down is continuing down below. I'm then going to just draw on, in my annotation layer, the arrow that shows the direction the staircase is travelling. Like so. Now you might want to add in a bit more detail into your stairs, you might want to add in handrails and you could just be using the polyline tool to do that as well. Kind of all of these elements, little details like that really add to the drawing so I definitely recommend going into more detail when you're doing these elements and adding those pieces in. 
So we're going to finish today's session just by quickly looking at internal walls and adding a bit more detail into those. And we're going to be adding a kind of internal wall partition and the structure in between that internal wall as well. Now, these walls are drawn at 125 mil distance from one another, thickness of them. And that's the kind of typical dimension of a timber stud work internal wall, which is what that means is it's kind of a wall that's made up of two layers of plasterboard and timber beams in between. What this usually looks like is you'll have the first layer of plasterboard will be 12.5 millimeters. And you'll also have one on this side. So this is plasterboard and plasterboard. And then you'll have a timber beam that's usually about 100 mil by 50 that sits in between those and that provides the structure for the wall so for this we're actually going to make the beam on our section fin layer because it's quite a small element and we're also going to change the plasterboard to a section fin now we've kind of drawn it in more detail we don't want those lines becoming too thick whenever you kind of draw a beam component or something that's being cut you could add on the kind of cross annotation which shows that this element's been cut by the plan that it's a kind of structural beam there and I'm just going to make that into a block as well just like we had before because I'm going to be copying this element multiple times and it might be that I might want to go back and change it at a later point and then using the same tool as we did with the staircase I'm going to copy this to the other end of the line, draw a line between them so I know kind of the distance I want to span. And these beams are usually spaced at 400 meters centers, so they're 400 millimeters apart from one another. So I'm going to use the array tool again, select my path, and the distance this time is going to be 400. OK. And there we've kind of added in those parts that build up of that wall and then I could then go around and do that to all my internal walls to start to add a little bit of extra detail in there. So that's where we're going to end today's session. So we've covered creating blocks and using the array tool. Both these tools are really really useful and you'll find as you kind of start to draw more detail in these ones will be really useful to get the hang of especially the block tool which will save you a lot of time down the line in creating multiple copies of component elements like doors, structural pieces of timber, um, window details and kind of all those parts. So really useful to get used to using that block tool for that. In the next session we're going to be looking at annotations and adding our drawings onto a layout page and setting up line weights and then we'll also be going into kind of adding a bit more detail into the plan using the hatches and different line type creation. Look forward to seeing you next session.